I want to read you some of this Shadowproof article because I think it Shadowproof's a good website. You should check it out. Uh, I think it points to some of the things I'm saying. The, ju- the Justice Department's grand jury investigation into WikiLeaks charged Assange with, quote, conspiracy to commit computer intrusion. It falls under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act and a general part of the criminal code, criminal code that can be used against individuals who conspired to defraud the U.S. While on the surface, it appears the Justice Department attempted to circumvent many of the First Amendment issues, which discouraged President Barack Obama's administration from moving forward with an indictment of Assange, the language in the indictment, dated March 6, 2018, is very similar to what prosecutors typically include in indictments against individuals charged with violating the Espionage Act. The indictment criminalizes Assange as an aider and a better of espionage for publishing unauthorized disclosures of classified information on the WikiLeaks website. The WikiLeaks, quote, the WikiLeaks website publicly solicited submissions of classified, censored, and other restricted information, the indictment states. Assange, who did not possess a security clan, security clearance or need to know was not authorized to receive classified information of the United States. Reporters or editors for media organizations publish stories based upon leaks of classified information all the time and typically do not have security clearances. If a precedent were set where journalists had to possess a security clearance, it would create a threat for any reporter relying upon such information to expose abuses of power or corruption committed by the U.S. government, including but not limited to security agencies. More significantly, Assange holds citizenship in Australia and was also granted citizenship by Ecuador a little over a year ago. Invoking secrecy regulations in the U.S. as part of an indictment against someone who is not an American citizen carries implications for world press freedom. When referring to an alleged, quote, password cracking agreement between Assange and Manning, the indictment contends, quote, Assange knew that Manning was providing WikiLeaks with classified records containing national defense information to the United States. Assange was knowingly receiving such classified records from Manning for the purpose of disclosing them on the WikiLeaks website. Here is the part of the Espionage Act that Manning was charged with violating. I'm not going to read that. Part of the alleged computer crime contains language alleging Assange violated the CFAA. Yet the Justice Department mostly shoehorns language from the Espionage Act into the alleged computer violation. Quote, A, to knowingly access a computer without authorization and exceeding authorized access to obtain information that has been determined by the United States government pursuant to an executive order and statute to require protection against the unauthorized disclosure for reasons of national defense and foreign relations, namely documents relating to the national defense classified up to secret level, with reason to believe that such information so obtained could be used to the injury of the U.S. and the advantage of any foreign nation. To the Justice Department, part of the conspiracy involves publishing information that could, quote, damage the United States. They believe when Assange received the information, he should have destroyed the documents or tried to, quote, return them to the U.S. government. It is but another alarming aspect of this indictment. Quote, it was part of the conspiracy that Assange encouraged Manning to provide information and records from departments and agencies of the U.S., according to the indictment. It was part of the conspiracy that Assange and Manning used a special folder on a cloud drop box of WikiLeaks to transmit classified records. In this section, prosecutors further allege Assange aided and abetted espionage as a co-conspirator by specifically criminalizing the act of using a Dropbox. Several journalists and media organizations use Dropboxes to accept documents from sources. One well-known setup is called SecureDrop. It would appear that Justice Department would like to establish a precedent that discourages media organizations from using this pub practice when engaging in journalism. The second part of the alleged computer crime explicitly notes the indictment is pulling from two sections of the Espionage Act, even though Assange was not charged with violating the Espionage Act. Additionally, there is the timeline of events that appears in the indictment. On March 8, 2010, prosecutors allege Assange agreed to assist in cracking a password so so she could anonymously access Defense Department computers, computer connected to the secret internet protocol network that held the documents. Manning had a security clearance because she was an all-source military intelligence analyst in Baghdad. She didn't need Assange to help her obtain access. What the prosecutors are claiming is her interest in shielding her identity and the fact that Assange allegedly was willing to help her protect her identity opened him up to a charge of conspiracy. 
The indictment highlights chats that allegedly occurred between, us, between Assange and Manning over the Jabber online chat service. What the indictment does not state is that the account Manning cars, uh, corresponded with was Nathaniel Frank. The U.S. government believes Assange, Assange used this account, but they will have to prove it in order to mount a successful prosecution. During Manning's Article 32 hearing in December 2011, before her case proceeded to a court-martial, military prosecutors prevented evidence they said would show Assange attempted to devise, to devise a way to browse SIPRnet anonymously. Journalist Alexa O'Brien transcribed much of the proceeding. From her unofficial transcript, this is when a military prosecutor described the alleged password-cracking agreement. On the screen, Your Honor, is an excerpt of a chat log. Again, these are chat logs recovered from PFC Manning's personal computer, and the evidence will show private uh, PFC Manning asked, any good at LM hash cracking? LM, the evidence will show, stands for land management. Pre-association responds, quote, we have rainbow tables for LM. Your Honor, the evidence will show that an LM hash is essentially the way that a Windows computer stores passwords on that computer. Manning attorneys released the following statement on Assange's indictment. I read that to you already. All of this supposed evidence was available to President Barack Obama's Justice Department. It begs the question, why didn't the Obama Justice Department indict Assange? The answer may involve the fact that the government still does not have enough evidence beyond a chat log to substantiate the existence of an agreement to crack a password. After all, Manning is in jail because she refused to testify before the grand jury and was held in civil contempt. Prosecutors may feel they need her testimony on the, quote, password cracking agreement. Or it may be that the Obama Justice Department thought even this charge would raise issues of press freedom that were intertwined with protections, which individuals are supposed to enjoy under the First Amendment. It still targets aspects of the news gathering process itself, despite the fact that the Justice Department can claim they are specifically going after a supposed agreement to crack a password. If evidence came out that Julian Assange assisted or directly hacked government databases himself, I would say that is not protected First Amendment rights. That is not acting as a journalist. That is acting as a criminal. It is a crime to hack a government database, even for noble reasons, even for the right reasons. There is no evidence he did that. And there is allegations that he entered in an agreement to try and help Chelsea Manning figure out a password. Not a password to obtain new documents, but a password to disguise her identity. Well, I got news for you. I'm a journalist, and I have bent over backwards to protect sources, particularly related to the Flint water crisis, when I am investigating things. I have protected sources who gave me gold, but didn't want to be identified. And in some cases, I did have to blur ethical lines to protect them. I didn't commit a crime doing so, but sometimes you got to straddle the line to get to the greater good. And I have no shame or regrets in saying that. And if you told me tomorrow that I had a source that could get Governor Rick Snyder, of former Governor Rick Snyder of Michigan's emails that showed his intent, and he knew about the Flint water crisis way before he said he did, that he didn't do anything about the lead in the water when he knew about it and let those people, that ch those children, drink poison water for a year, actually 18 months, when he knew. If I knew that those emails existed and there was a source who could get those emails, would I personally jump and hack those emails? No, I wouldn't. But if they said to me, oh, I'm, I'm having trouble accessing that and, and asked me for ideas, would I not uh, give them ideas how to do it? Yeah, I would. No shame in saying that. I don't think that's criminal either. There's a difference between doing it yourself and working with a source, brainstorming, whatever, to get information. And if that information could help bring accountability for hunt, for. 100,000 people who drank poison and are forever damaged? You're damn right I would do it. And in this case, if Julian Assange 
had an agreement to help Chelsea Manning come up with a password to reveal war crimes. Hundreds of thousands of Iraqis have died. Thousands of American soldiers. The thousands after have killed themselves because of PTSD. ISIS was created. Global instability. Six to seven trillion dollars we've spent. Half the country is poor because we've been going on these parades and these adventures all over the world. Because, we sh- oh my God, it's, 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 you shouldn't do that. If it's, you, you shouldn't reveal all that if it means you have to help somebody crack a password. Are you kidding me? But I want to end with this. And I'm sorry if I wasn't as jovial and, you know, goofy as I normally am today. There's something deeper beyond Julian Assange about his arrest. And make no mistake, I believe he will be extradited to the United States. If he is extradited to the United States, the trial will be a show trial, and he will get a death sentence, whether it's life in prison with 23 hours a day, solitary confinement, life in prison without parole with 23 hours a day, solitary confinement, or the death penalty. My guess it, was, it would be solitary confinement for the rest of his life for committing journalism. But I think that what's going on here is a very slippery slope because today it's the criminal, criminalization of working with a private army s- sergeant or entering an agreement or publishing classified information. That's what it is today. But what if in a year from now, it's journalists like me covering a protest in St. Louis. Remember Ty and I covered a protest in St. Louis when we were at the Young Turks? We weren't marching as protesters. I had my microphone, he had his camera, and we were following the protests. But what if the fact that we showed up to a parking lot before the protest, because the protesters told us to be at a, at a parking lot where the protest started, what if that suddenly becomes coordinating with the protesters? The protesters shut down a whole highway in St. Louis. The police were very unhappy about that because that was, for whatever reason, the main battleground. We, we can't let them take the highway. That was what the police were really, really most worried about because there were protests for 30 days straight after another white cop got off killing an unarmed black man. A black man who, by the way, the cop during the chase said on the, vo- on the audio, I'm going to kill that motherfucker, you watch. And then he killed him. He got off. What if it suddenly becomes, oh, well, that's not journalism. You, you, know, you were communicating with the activists. You showed up where they told you to. You talk to the activists before they started marching. What if that suddenly becomes a crime? Because I know that most of my journalism and most of Jen's journalism and most of Ty's journalism, I don't go to experts first. I don't go to think tanks first to get my information. I go to activists. I go to residents. I go to the people That's what status quo is about. Hand the microphone. Give the microphone back to the people. But what if suddenly, what if suddenly, you know, you're at Standing Rock, right? Which I was seven times, by the way. And what if suddenly, you know, you're getting tipped off by activists because those are your sources and you show up overnight, which I did. I showed up overnight. There was no other reporters there. Me and my cameraman at the time, I don't remember who it was actually, showed up and they were building a bridge. They were building a bridge uh, to get back to the small mountain that their ancestors were buried that had been blocked off by the Dakota Access Pipeline to them. But what if the fact that I was tipped off and I was there and when the cameras, when the cameras went off, I sat with the protesters and I sat with the activists who were building this bridge uh, uh, across, around a circle and I spoke with them. And I commiserated with them. What if, under the new laws, what they were deemed to be doing, because there's new laws now, basically criminalizing protesting pipelines. What if now the criminalization of those protesters calling them 
eco-terrorists who are blocking critical infrastructure for the United States, which becomes a felony, by the way. What if the journalist who was there and got tipped off about it because they trusted me, because I gained their trust, is kind of what you have to do as a journalist to get information and to get tipped off. What if the fact that I was do there covering their felony, their eco-terrorism, and I, I, you know, could be deemed that I helped coordinate with them. What if that becomes a crime? <laughs> I'm not saying this arrogantly. I'm, I'm keeping it real. There are very few status coups out there. There are very few independent outlets out there that actually go out there and cover the people and show the real news, not the news that, you know, is sensational or sexy or this or that. What's really going on, because the controlled demolition of the United States middle class, the controlled demolition and extermination of black people, of brown people, of indigenous people. There are very few of us. When I say us, I mean status quo. And how do I know? Because when we go out there, there's very few reporters ever there. I can't tell you how many press conferences I've been at by myself. I can't tell you how many times I've been by myself covering a, you know, something like that, a, a bridge being rebuilt in Standing Rock at four in the morning. That's why I have the bags under my eyes that I have. That's why I need another back surgery. I'm going on my second because I, I lived this and I breathed this. And eventually it might kill me a little earlier, but I'd rather live the right way with some passion than suck up and, and bow down to corrupt warmongers, both globally and here at home. Because it's not just war that we're committing globally. There's beginning to be a war perpetrated against us, you and me. War isn't always, you know, guns ablazing or bombs. War is making people's daily life threatening, criminalizing protected First Amendment rights. And what I just described, those scenarios are not so far away. And I got news for you folks, the, the rest of the world and the Hillbots and the resistance can make it seem like, oh, all these threats suddenly happened under Donald Trump. Have they become worse under Donald Trump? Absolutely. Is the Trump administration and his Department of Justice threatening, uh, you know, journalists? Absolutely. Are they threatening black people? Absolutely. LGBT, LGBTQ people? Absolutely. But a lot of this began starting in the 1990s with Bill Clinton, extending to George W. Bush, escalating with hope and change, President Obama, and now with Donald Trump. These are the stakes. So today, it's Julian Assange in criminalizing publishing classified information. Next year, it might not be just classified information. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you.